As Ben mentioned, uh, I'm going to talk about some new uh, developments that we've had uh, in the last couple years with um, TOF Sims imaging, specifically with respect to uh, the capability for tandem MS identification and imaging uh, in conjunction with, uh, with TOF Sims. So this is on our, uh, our new TOF Sims platform, uh, the Nano TOF 2. So just to start things off, Phi has been uh, designing and producing TOF Sims instruments uh, since the late 1980s. Uh, so we've got quite a long history of market leading uh, developments in TOF Sims uh, applications and the hardware that's uh, required to do some of those new applications. And of course, uh, that began um, in the late 80s with a reflectron based TOF Sims instrument and later on with the, uh, the TRIFT-based TOF SIMS instrument, as well as development of uh, new primary ion sources and new applications such as FibTOF and stuff. But uh, today we're gonna focus on the TANM MS capability, uh, what we call parallel imaging MS MS. So of course, uh, many of you are probably familiar with TOF SIMS. Some of you may not be familiar with TOF SIMS, but TOF Sims uh, is really nice in a number of application areas um, because with TOF Sims, of course, there's no limitation in, uh, in mass range, uh, theoretically at least. Um, so we can detect all elements and isotopes as well as molecules that are present on the surface of the sample. And all of that spectral and imaging information is saved so that it can be mined at a later date. Uh, what we call retrospective analysis. TOF SIMS is a fast uh, imaging technique, so typically you can collect images of the surface in a matter of minutes. Uh, Two-dimensional as well as three-dimensional imaging is possible without labeling, uh, as would be done in Raman, or without an applied matrix as is necessary uh, in MALDI mass spectrometry. SIMS is very sensitive uh, we achieve uh, quite high spatial resolution, uh, down below 100 nanometer spatial resolution is possible. And uh, of course one of the biggest attributes of TOF SIMS is that we can look at any material, whether it's an insulator or a conductor or semiconductor. But along with that speed that is inherent with TOF SIMS imaging, because we're operating at a very high repetition rate in imaging, that has an impact on the mass resolution as well as the mass accuracy, which are two things that are quite necessary for identification of peaks in the mass spectrum. So one of the biggest uh, disadvantages of TOF SIMS is the ability to identify molecules that have a mass larger than 200 Daltons. So as an example of that, I will uh, rely on a biological example. And in this biological example, what we were doing was looking at uh, two spleen sections from a mouse. Uh, one was infected and the other was a healthy control sample. And in the process of looking at these spleen sections, one of the th differences that we noted uh, was that there was a lipid at a mass to charge ratio of 756 um, that had a much higher abundance in the diseased tissue section. So of course we want to have the identification of that peak so that we can know something more about the disease state and possibly how to treat it. So what we would typically do uh, in TOF Sims is um, try to do an identification of that peak. So if uh, in TOF Sims you know, in a best case scenario, we've got a mass accuracy of 20 to 30 ppm. Often, if there's any topography in the sample, that mass accuracy degrades uh, pretty quickly to about 50 ppm. And so if we do a search of biological molecules at uh, 756.55 within a mass accuracy of 50 ppm, uh, what we see is that there are a total of 97 structural candidates for the peak that we're seeing in our TOF SIM spectrum. We think uh, that the peak that we're looking at is a sodiated adduct of a phosphocholine, uh, 
And of those 97 structural candidates, 44 of those are phosphocholines, 23 of those are sodiated phosphocholines. So out of 97 total candidates, uh, we still uh, don't have the ability to narrow that down enough to identify the peak. And the only way to be able to do that for sure uh, with any sort of certainty is to use tandem mass spectrometry. So how is it possible that we can do tandem mass spectrometry uh, with TOF sims? Well, as I noted earlier, since the mid-90s, uh, physical electronics has uh, produced only uh, a TRIFT-based uh, TOF sims instrument. Now the TRIFT mass spectrometer, uh, TRIFT stands for Triple Ion Focusing Time of Flight. And this mass analyzer uh, is our uh, analyzer of choice on our TOF sims instrument because it has a number of unique advantages over the reflectron-based instrument, which we stopped producing long ago. Um, among those uh, significant uh, enhancements or uh, superior functionalities is that the TRIFT mass spectrometer allows us to get quite superior uh, imaging of rough samples uh, because it has a very large angular acceptance and a very large depth of field. Um, the TRIFT spectrometer is always ground referenced, uh, so it, the mass scale linearity is uh, quite superior um, over uh, what can be achieved in a reflectron. Um, the TRIFT mass spectrometer is also a bandpass uh, kinetic energy filter, and it was also designed uh, as a stigmatic imaging mass spectrometer. And what that means is that every ion that strikes the uh, detector can be ray traced all the way back to the sample surface. And as a consequence of that stigmatic imaging design, there are a number of spatial crossovers uh, in the secondary ion flight path uh, that give us very high secondary ion transmission um, but also uh, reduce the background, the spectral background, so that we have superior signal to background. Um, and lastly, uh, we can, uh, with the TRIFT mass spectrometer, because the secondary electron detector is part of the mass spectrometer, we have a secondary electron detector as well as the secondary ion detector uh, together. And because those are collinear, uh, we can collect pulsed secondary electron images, uh, which is quite an advantage uh, on an insulating sample. So now, how do we incorporate the tandem mass spectrometry into that TRIFT? Well, if uh, you'll remember, I mentioned that the TRIFT mass spectrometer uh, has several spatial and temporal crossovers in the secondary ion flight path. Now, one of those spatial crossovers is after the third electrostatic analyzer, so the TRIFT is comprised of three ESAs, or electrostatic analyzers. After the third ESA, there's a, a very special spatial crossover there, and it's special because all of the secondary ions are focused to a very small diameter spot, um, but also all of the secondary ions are almost completely uh, separated by time of flight. So this gives us an opportunity to pick off a very narrow window of precursor ions for tandem mass spectrometry. So we have this tandem mass spectrometer that is quite well uh, integrated uh, into our normal TOFSIMS mass analyzer. So it's simple um, and it's easy to use and it gives certain uh, peak identification uh, in the TOF sim spectrum. Uh, we have a very narrow monoisotopic precursor selection uh, that gives us also very high transmission for optimized sensitivity. And the NanoTOF 2 uh, with the tandem MS capability is the only uh, instrument in the world that is capable of surface analysis while also providing tandem mass spectrometry identification of molecules. We maintain our high speed um, for analysis, so the tandem mass spectrometer operates at the exact same uh, frequency of operation as the normal um, TOF-SIMS mass spectrometer. We achieve uh, 
sub 100 nanometer spatial resolution in both MS1 and MS2 imaging. Again, high surface sensitivity for surface characterization applications. And lastly, our tandem mass spectra are generated by high energy uh, kilo electron volt collision induced dissociation. So not only do we get compositional identification of our precursors, uh, but the high energy CID also gives us structural information about the precursor molecules as well. So now coming back to our biological example, uh, so when we do the tandem MS analysis of our precursor at uh, 756.55, what we can actually see in the product ion spectrum is that there are two unresolved components within that monoisotopic precursor selection window. One of the components we can readily identify is the sodium adduct of phosphocholine 320. The 320 simply means that there are 32 carbons in the acyl chains uh, with zero unsaturations. But the other thing that we see is that there's an unresolved interference from indium oxide which arises from the ITO substrate that that tissue section was mounted on. So without the need for any uh, calibration matrix applied or ionization matrix, we are able to identify two components that are unresolved in that selection window. And we have certain identification of our biological molecule as well. So I have a, a couple examples uh, to demonstrate the capability here for materials applications. Uh, the first uh, example is looking at an automotive poly polypropylene surface. So for this example, uh, we had two pieces of automotive polypropylene that were sent to us from a customer. Uh, the sample that is circled in blue is the sample that was analyzed and from which I will show data in the next few slides. So we received this sample and uh, there were a few peaks uh, that the customer wanted identified. And uh, so shown here uh, are the TOF Sims total ion image. Uh, as well as the TOF sims uh, spectrum uh, from that sample surface. So there were three peaks uh, among the many components uh, that exist in the sample. There were three peaks uh, in particular that we were asked to identify, and those are at mass to charge ratios of 284, 304, and 481. So we take a very quick uh, two minute analysis. Uh, on this polypropylene surface uh, just to see what's present and what we might uh, want to go after for identification. On the bottom now we have uh, our TOF sim spectrum. Now uh, in the absence of tandem mass spectrometry uh, we would use the tools available to us as practitioners of TOF sims. We would use those tools in the software to identify the peaks in our TOF sim spectrum. So if we take a look at that using the compound ID libraries, which are quite limited uh, in TOF sims, or the peak ID tool uh, in the software, um, I've shown the peak ID tool uh, for each of the peaks uh, in red uh, for the 284 uh, peak, in yellow for the 304 peak, and at 481 um, in green for the 481 peak. So if we use these tools and we can calibrate the mass spectrum as far as we have confidence uh, in those peak assignments, in this particular case, uh, it's up to the peak at a mass to charge ratio of 134, uh, which is C9H12N. Uh, so again, this is the positive ion mass spectrum. So if we look at our peak ID tool, um, now I'm speaking here after I've done the, uh, the tandem MS identification of the peaks. Uh, but what's interesting to note is that for the peak at 284 and for the peak at 481, the correct peak composition does not even exist in the peak ID tool. For the one at uh, 304, for the peak at 304, the correct composition is there, um, but it is not the top hit. So it would be quite easy to make an incorrect uh, peak assumption uh, for all of those peaks. 
in fact. So the only way to have confidence in the peak assignments here is to use tandem mass spectrometry for the peak identification. So what we then do is we can look at our TOF sim spectrum as kind of a chromatogram that separates out all of the different components that are present in the sample surface. So just like you would use liquid chromatography or gas phase chromatography to separate out the components that are present and then do mass spectrometry, what we're doing is two steps of mass spectrometry. And the first step is our separation step. And then the second step is our identification step. So here we are showing in the bottom uh, frame the product ion spectrum for our precursor at a mass to charge ratio of 304. This is an eight minute analysis uh, to an ion dose of about uh, seven and a half times 10 to the 11 ions per square centimeter. So this is well below uh, the static limit. So this is definitely a surface analysis identification capability. So now that we have our product ion spectrum, uh, we can take the peaks that are present and use that for reference library matching. We use the NIST uh, reference library. It is integral with our software and we use that NIST reference library to do the peak identification. So on the uh, bottom right uh, is one of the tools that's used for reference library matching uh, against the NIST database. And so using uh, our four peaks at 304, 212, 91, and 58, uh, we enter those and we have 14 potential matches against that spectrum. So if we look at the matches, those 14 matches, the first seven are benzyl dodecyl dimethyl ammonium, and the next hit is something different. But if we look at the first hit, uh, we see that we have an identical match to our TOF sims tandem mass spectrum. And so we've identified that, very excellent match results. And in contrast to TOF sims reference libraries, uh, which contain maybe 2,000 compounds, uh, the NIST reference library contains over 230,000 compounds. Um, and my understanding is that the, the new release that just came out uh, adds about another 100,000 to that. So we have very confident peak identification here for this precursor at a mass to charge ratio of 304. So then we can take a look at that structure and uh, make all of the compositional assignments uh, in our product ion spectrum and that is shown on this slide. And of course we can continue uh, that tandem MS reference library matching uh, for all of the, the different peaks of interest uh, on the sample. This is an example at a mass to charge ratio, uh, the precursor at 481. Uh, this was uh, matched to Tinibin 770 and the compositional assignments uh, also verify that. So in a matter of 30 minutes, that is acquisition time and reference library matching, uh, we have identified all three peaks of interest uh, on our sample surface. Now those of you who are used to doing TOF sims analysis, especially if you're in a business environment, time is money. And typically if you have an unknown peak or something that you have difficulty assigning in your TOF sim spectrum, the drill is that you get reference compounds for everything that could be in the sample. You know, so you can spend a significant amount of time just collecting the reference samples and then making samples to do the analysis on. Um, so it's not inconceivable that you can spend days or even a couple weeks just trying to identify a few peaks in your TOF sim spectrum. Here in 30 minutes, uh, we've identified with absolute uncertainty three peaks of interest on this sample. So it's a big time saver. Now just to back up a little bit, I wanted to cover something that uh, normally gets lost in the discussion, and that is with the parallel imaging MSMS, both the TOF-SIMS data, or what we call the MS-1 data, 
and the tandem MS data, what we also call the MS2 data, both of those data sets are collected simultaneously. And so here's a, a schematic illustration to kind of demonstrate that uh, capability. So at the same time uh, that we're collecting our TOF SIMS data, uh, we are also collecting tandem MS product ion data on the top. Now we're collecting imaging as well as spectral information simultaneously. So in both MS1 and in MS2, we're collecting the full mass spectrum at every image pixel. And so you can still do full retrospective analysis on any sample or on any data set. So here uh, we're showing for the MS1 data, uh, in particular, I wanted to point out this uh, image for the peak at a mass to charge ratio of 58 and contrast that to the image for the same peak from the product ion spectrum. The spatial distribution is some similarities but also some differences in both of those images. Now on this slide, uh, what we show is that two of the components uh, that we're looking at, that we're doing tandem MS identification on, two of those components also have the C3H8N ion in the product ion spectrum, and of course we see that same peak in the MS1 spectrum. So when we look at the image in MS1, what we're actually seeing is a convolution of the spatial distribution of that peak from two different components. So the power of the tandem MS, in addition to identification, is also the ability to see the true spatial distribution of those individual components in the sample. So here we have a second example. Uh, this is just a, a material sample that at the outset looks pretty straightforward to characterize. We look at the TOF SIM spectrum, and there's really only one peak at, at relatively high mass and that peak arises at a mass to charge ratio of 284. So we're thinking, okay, this uh, should be pretty simple and straightforward because there's only one peak that we have to worry about identifying. Uh, the peak at 256, it's perfectly reasonable that that's a, a loss of C2H4 uh, from the peak at 284. So we think, yep, this should be pretty simple and pretty straightforward. It's a simple mass spectrum, uh, but it can still be difficult to identify that component. And so if we look at just the TOF SIM spectrum, what we really like to see to have confidence in our peak assignment is that we have a mass deviation of less than one milli AMU. Uh, here for our top hit, our mass deviation is almost four milli AMU, uh, which is an error of 13 parts per million. In, in absolute terms, uh, to get a very high confidence peak match, what you want to see uh, is an error of less than one ppm. So we've got our work cut out for us to do the identification on this and have some confidence in that peak assignment. So we use our tandem MS capability. We collect both MS1 and MS2 data simultaneously. So we see our mass to charge 284 peak in our TOF SIM spectrum and we also have a product ion spectrum for that precursor at a mass to charge ratio of 284. So we have uh, several ion images uh, generated with our TOF SIMS spectrum and in the top right now I'm showing just the total ion image for the precursor ion. Now we can image any individual ion in the product ion spectrum just like we would from the TOF SIM spectrum. So if we generate an ion image from the peak at a mass to charge ratio of 88 in the product ion spectrum, lo and behold it looks like there's some spatial inhomogeneity uh, in that ion image. Now we can also take a look at some other peaks and uh, this one at a mass to charge ratio of 60 um, shows a complementary spatial distribution to what we see at a mass to charge ratio of 88. So looking at a bunch of other peaks in the, in the uh, product ion spectrum, uh, we arrive at a conclusion that there are two components that are unresolved at a mass to charge ratio of 84, uh, 284, excuse me. So now what we can do is because we have 
a full mass spectrum at every image pixel, we can use this uh, spatial inhomogeneity to generate pure component mass spectra for the identification. So here uh, on the left we have an image that has red pixels assigned to the image at a mass to charge ratio of 60, green pixels assigned uh, for the image at a mass to charge ratio of 88. From those subsets of pixels we generate our pure component uh, mass spectra. So on the top is the product ion spectrum from the red pixels and the bottom panel is the product ion spectrum from the green pixels. Now we can use our NIST reference library to do the matching and in both cases on top and on bottom we have excellent and high confident uh, reference library matches. The red pixels correspond to hexadecyl trimethyl ammonium and the green pixels correspond to octadecanamid. So now, quite simply and in a straightforward manner, uh, we've arrived at the identification of both of those molecules. Octadecanamid has an exact mass of 284.29. Hexadecyl trimethyl ammonium has an exact mass of 284.33. It would take a mass resolution of about 9,000 to fully resolve those peaks. In this particular case, um, the sample was a little bit rough. You can see a shoulder at the mass to charge ratio of 284, but the peaks are not resolved. So the tandem MS identification uh, and imaging comes in uh, really handy in this particular case for the uh, identification part. And then as a last example, I wanted to show something that gives you a sense of the tandem MS identification capability on, on a rough sample. Uh, so these are two geological core samples that are quite rough. Uh, these were mounted uh, as received. There was no other uh, sample prep that was done to these. They were mounted using only double-sided sticky tape. So there's two samples. The one on top uh, was not exposed to water uh, during the processing from the customer. The one on the, samp on the bottom was exposed to water during the processing. And the data that I'll show is uh, only from a sample that was exposed to water. Now much of the data that we collected I don't have permission to show you, so the only thing that I have permission to show is some of the um, uh, less interesting uh, clusters that were identified, um, but it still uh, shows the capability quite nicely. Uh, so here on this slide we have several ion images from both MS1 as well as MS2. Uh, because the data is collected together, uh, we can show those uh, images and they come from the exact same spot on the sample. For the tandem MS, uh, MS identification, uh, one of the peaks that we identified was at a mass to charge ratio of 139. And I'm sure some of you have come across cases where it can be somewhat difficult even to identify inorganic uh, cluster ions in the tof sim spectrum, especially as you get to higher mass to charge ratios. So the product ion spectrum for the precursor at 139 clearly shows us that we have uh, sodium dichloride. Uh, for the precursor at a mass to charge ratio of 257, again we have a sodium chloride cluster, but this particular peak has one chlorine 37 atom uh, in it, and we can see that uh, isotope distribution in each of the product ions in the tandem MS spectrum. So here are some uh, false color overlay images uh, showing again uh, the combination of the MS2 data with the MS1 data to see the spatial distribution of these different components. On the right uh, is an overlay of aluminum, silicon, and calcium. And one item of note uh, in this particular example is that one thing that was of interest is the dispersion of little particles of clay uh, in these limestone samples and the aluminum silicon overlay uh, with the calcium quite nicely shows the distribution of the clay particles. Just to summarize, the NanoTOF2 gives us a capability for TOF sims analysis while using the parallel imaging MSMS capability for 
absolute peak identification. Uh, it's a tandem MS capability incorporated with TOF SIMS that is simple, elegant, and fast. It's very user friendly. It saves a huge amount of time. It actually makes TOF SIMS analysis fun because for the first time in ever, uh, we have accurate and confident peak identification. Thank you again, everyone, for participating, and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.